Cellular communication requires faithful transmission and receipt of signals. These signals must transmit from one cell to another across an extracellular environment and can come in a variety of different forms, ranging from the activation of ion channels to the binding of growth factors to receptors. What enables the recipient cell to distinguish different signals? Is there a way a cell can retain a record of the previous signals it has encountered? These questions are very important for cells with numerous connections like neurons. How these connections or synapses are formed, shaped, and maintained depends on the signal content transmitted. A fascinating protein which responds to calcium signals at synapses is the calcium calmodulin dependent protein kinase 2. CAMK2 is activated by calcium bound calmodulin and can autophosphorylate itself to different levels depending on the calcium stimulus received. Once phosphorylated, CAMK2 retains activity, marking the strength of the signal it has just encountered. What is the structure of the full length holoenzyme and how does the oligomeric assembly control how CAMK2 responds to calcium? We crystallized and solved the structure of a human isoform of CAMK2 beta 7. Data were collected at the Berkeley National Lab's advanced light source. What we found was something new and unexpected. Each subunit of the holoenzyme comprises a catalytic domain, a regulatory segment, and the hub domain, which assembles the complex. A variable linker connects the kinase domain to the hub domain. There are over 40 expressed forms of CAMK2 that differ mainly in the variable linker between the kinase and the hub domain. The human beta-7 isoform crystallized has a short linker region. In the crystal structure, a portion of the regulatory segment is incorporated into the hub domain itself. Extensive interactions are observed between the kinase and the hub domains. This structure reveals a compact assembly with the calmodulin binding regions completely sequestered. Using small angle x-ray scattering, we found that the overall conformation of the assembly can adopt an extended or compact conformation depending on the length of the linker region. The short linker forms adopt a compact conformation, while longer linker forms adopt an extended conformation. We observed that mutation of interactions seen in the crystal structure affect the activation of isoforms with a short linker. Curiously, we noticed that in long linker isoforms, these mutations have no effect. The interiors of cells are crowded environments, with protein concentrations on the order of 300 mg per milliliter. Could such a large conformational change between compact and extended forms of the holoenzyme be sensitive to molecular crowding? We measured the activation of long linker isoforms under simulated crowding conditions and observed that in this context, mutations affect activation of the enzyme. This suggests that the strength of interactions observed in the structure are modulated by changes in the linker. A property that may be important for distinguishing between different calcium signals in the nervous system is frequency. Previous studies have shown that the linker length in naturally occurring CAMK2 isoforms determines the frequency threshold for phosphorylation. We find that mutating the interactions, important for the compact state observed in the crystal structure, also shift the threshold frequency for phosphorylation. Do you think that this equilibrium between compact and extended states could be some sort of a general mechanism for setting the frequency threshold? Mm. Let's see what simulation teaches us. We made a model where the structural change of the whole enzyme is represented by a dark and extended state of each kind of domain. These stochastic kinetic simulations show that changing the equilibrium constant between dark and extended state of kinase domain can shift the uh, frequency threshold for activation. This work shows that changes in the linker can shift the frequency response of CAMK2 by altering the set point of an equilibrium between compact and extended forms of the hollow enzyme. When the equilibrium is shifted towards the compact state, observed in the crystal structure, the enzyme has a higher calcium threshold frequency. With longer linker isoforms, the equilibrium is shifted towards the extended form, and the enzyme has a lower calcium threshold frequency. CAMK2 is a highly conserved enzyme with individual kinase and hub domains that are essentially identical from sea urchins to humans. This tunable auto-inhibition enables a range of responses to be produced simply by altering the linker, thus providing a way for cells to distinguish different calcium stimuli.